Hello, and as always, I'd like to welcome you to the Laramie K Optician Works Training Center, where this week we try to answer a question that someone posted for us on our Facebook page. We're going to talk a little bit about resultant prism. The question that was posted on our Facebook page was, can you help me work through verification on a job that has compound prism? We have been working plenty of prism problems for the basic ABO review or prep stuff. Turns out that in reality, I am afraid that it gets a whole lot more complex than that. In fact, most prism work actually comes with two directions and two powers. When that happens, those two different directions and powers have an effect on each other, and we have to determine what that effect is. That is about resultant prism, and that is what we're going to start digging into a little bit today. Oh yeah, one more thing. Hey, thanks for posting that question. It was a great one. You know, it really follows up on a really important fact, unlike your simple base in two diopters kind of thing. You cannot verify a lens with compound prism until you know what it is you're looking for, how much you're looking for, and where it should be. Here are the numbers that were sent in with the question. In our right, we have a minus 125 plus 550 at 137. And yes, we do have a plus cylinder here. And in a few moments, you're gonna find out that it really doesn't matter. We have two and a half diopters up and five diopters of prism out. In our left, we have a minus 275 plus 450 at 107. We've got two and a half down and five out in the left eye. We have an add of plus 250 OU, and we have a beautiful Laramie K optical IOT designed progressive lens. Now I'm gonna do something that's probably gonna surprise you a little bit. I'm gonna wipe that out because we don't use it. I'm gonna wipe that out because we don't use it. I'm gonna wipe that out because we don't use it. What we're gonna do first, super important, more than anything else, is we're gonna put the lens in the lens meter in the correct position so that when we read it, everything is lined up like it's supposed to. So there's our diagram of the markings that are on a progressive, and we're going to take that prism reference point or prism reference dot, and we're going to place that directly in the center of the lens stop opening on the lens meter. From there, we're gonna to toss out everything that we've learned so far about prism. We're gonna to toss out Prentice's formula. We're gonna to toss out the drawings with the apex to apex and the base to base. We're gonna to toss out the eyeballs where we move the lens in front of the eye and try to determine which direction we're getting. None of that stuff really works when we're talking about resultant prism. Gonna use a new formula in order to decide the direction and the power and where it should appear in the lens meter. It will probably help you if you have a printout of this chart. We've provided one for you. Just go to the Optician Works website. There is the address and click on free stuff. Then scroll down to the bottom and you'll see prism chart. You can also use these charts to do this by hand, but that's another video for another day. But for today, I would go ahead and print this out because it will help you visualize it and see the quadrants. When working with resultant prism, we can replace our old base to base, apex to apex drawings that we were using for simple Prentice's formula, and we can use this layout grid instead. This is how labs actually work with prism. On a job order with resultant prism, you may not even see the usual base in, base out, but rather an amount at a specified degree. The grid can be thought of as a lens or as the lens in the lens meter. Pay close attention to the quadrants and your right left. Notice that up is up and down is down, regardless of which lens you're looking at. However, in and out changes when you move from your right and your left lenses. The first step in working or thinking about resultant prism is deciding which quadrant your prism will end up in. Simply look at what you need, make sure you have your rights and your lefts straight, 
For instance, right lens, base down and in, is going to end up in quadrant four. Now we have a rough idea of where that prism is going to be placed. Rough isn't going to cut it. Rough's not going to make a pair of glasses that somebody can wear, and Rough is not going to tell the lab precisely how to set up their surfacing equipment so the prism ends up in the right place. That's where the math comes in. It is a three-step formula. Here are the first two. And as I always warn you, uh, you know, it's a three-step process. Don't jump ahead and don't think just because you work your calculator that you happen to be finished with the problem. The first step involved is the Pythagorean theorem, for those of you who enjoy math, and that is p squared is equal to h squared plus v squared. We have our horizontal amount of 5 and our vertical amount of 2.5. Our h, 5 squared is 25, 2.5 squared is 6.25, those added together are 31.25. We want p, not p squared. So we're gonna take the square root of our 31.25 and we end up at 5.59 or 5.6 diopters. Notice that five plus 2.5 is 7.5. Where do we end up? 5.6. That's why we don't just add these together as a result for resultant prism. We have to work through this and we end up here. We have got our amount. Now we need to decide exactly where that amount is going to be placed within our 360 degrees and within our quadrant. Our horizontal amount this way is five in out, up down our vertical is 2.5. Think about it this way, as V changes my vertical and or my H resultant, the two working together, V, H, H, V are given. If those change, okay, if I lengthen this, if I make this a stronger prism wedge, if I move this, this gets longer, then this angle changes as well. The position of it, the degrees, the tangent of that is going to alter. So if I change my 5 or my 2.5 up or down, this is going to change in relationship to my circle. So my question is, what angle has the tangent of 0 0.5? So if I plug in my tangent A divided, I get 0.5. If I put 0 0.5 and I hit this button on my scientific calculator, let's go ahead and do that, I get up at 26.565. Or rounded up, I end up at 27 degrees. We're not done. This particular answer for this given amount actually is not going to be 27 degrees. So that's step three. Step number three. For those of you who are observant, you may have realized that the <coughs> color of my shirt has changed. It has changed to the same shade of red that my face is. I made a mistake. And I'd like to personally thank Matt King over at the Optical Guild on Facebook for catching that, especially catching it first thing in the morning so it didn't stay up for very long. Look, I made a mistake. I did not follow my own advice and I didn't take the time to work this problem all the way through the correct way. If in doubt, draw it out. And I should have done that from the start. I mentioned that you can use the chart to work these by hand, and that is what I should have done, and this is what it actually looks like. If I plot my prism on the chart for my right, I have base up and base out. I move over along that 180 degree line, five steps and up two and a half steps. It's right there in front of you. You don't actually even need to do the math. If you just draw it out on the chart, you'll have the answer in front of you. If we look at the left, if I move over five to the right along the 180 and then down two and a half, because my prism amount is down and out in a left lens, I end up along the 333 degree line instead. 
For those of you who want to work the math through, we ended up, you'll recall, at 27 degrees. And if you are here, but we need to be here, to reach the 153, we would be moving 27 degrees back up into this quadrant from the 180 degree line. That's where that would come from. For our left, because we need to be in this quadrant, we only have 27, we can move 27 degrees down and into this quadrant. So my 360 minus my 27 brings me down to 333 degrees. Those, of course, because our math is the same, are also directly opposite each other. That is where the target is going to appear in the lens meter when you're going to verify this particular pair of glasses. And this is what it would look like in the lens meter. Assuming you placed the lens correctly in the lens meter with the prism reference point in the right place, with your PCD, your prism compensation device at zero, you would move your reticle around. With that, we'll move your one, two, three, four, five diopter indication points. Rotate the reticle around so it's across the 153 degree mark, and your target should appear just above the five prism diopter indicator. If you had that, this pair of glasses would have been made correct for that prism amount. Whew. Kind of a wild ride this week, I would say. That's a lot going on, isn't it? Thanks for watching. I will catch you again next week. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button down there in the lower corner. If you're watching me on Facebook, be sure to share this with as many people as you can. If you love these free videos, by all means, please consider joining OpticianWorks.com or even better, become a customer of Laramie K Optical and we'll throw these memberships in for free.